Hey guys, it's been a while since I filmed the video and you'll notice my background is a little bit different compared to before. And that's because I've moved to California. And in this closet right over here is a new printer. I purchased the Bamboo Labs P1P after selling my Adventure 4 back in Canada. And today I'll talk about why I sold the Adventure 4, why I bought the P1P and what I love about the P1P over the Adventure 4. But if you want to know the gist of my opinion, it's that the Bamboo Labs P1P is 10 times better than the Adventure 4 or even more than that. I would never go back to that Adventure 4 and I love my P1P. The P1P is a solid printer for beginners or experts. Well, if you like to tinker with your printer, maybe the P1P isn't for you. For me, I don't want too much tinkering, but I do want a little bit here and there, which the P1P does provide. The fact that it's a bare steel frame, I can add a lot of customization down in the future. Now compared to my Adventure 4, the P1P goes at lightning speed. Sometimes it travels 10 times as fast as the Adventure 4. I've gotten speeds up to 400 millimeters per second, which you could never dream about on the Adventure 4. The travel speed of the Adventure 4 tops at 150 millimeters per second. In typical printing speeds, I've pushed it to maybe about 60 millimeters per second without print quality suffering. At 400 millimeters per second on the Bamboo Labs P1P, your print quality or strength does suffer a little bit. With PLA, it is manageable though. But on average, I'm seeing speeds around 200 millimeters per second to 300 millimeters per second for PLA. And you'll know with the Adventure 4, the bane of my existence was printing Petchy. I would always get blobs on the side, I would get under extrusion, I would get over extrusion, I would get nozzle clogs. Both the P1P, the first print I did, pretty much came out flawless. Here's a Benchy with Pet G and I think it took around 30 minutes to do. Versus with my Adventure 4, I think to crank out a good Benchy took me an hour and a half. There's virtually no stringing on this print. The overhangs all look great as well as any of the bridges look awesome. The only thing is the text at the back of the boat is barely readable or I would say not even readable. I think that's just because the P1P is traveling so fast that it causes text, very small text, to not come out very well. I may try to tune this later on, but for what it is, printing functional parts, this is already amazing. One last thing I want to mention about the Bamboo Labs P1P is the bed leveling. Compared to the Adventure 4, bed leveling on the Adventure 4 was a nightmare. You had to go in every single time with this little shim, and I wasn't even sure if my bed leveling was correct. Also, it would take an average of all the points on the plate, rather than build up some sort of mesh of the bed and adjust the Z height based on where you're printing. So if your bed was warped or your gantry was out of alignment, well, you're out of luck. You can never print across the entire plate. And I had a bed that wasn't fully leveled. There was some difference. So on the outsides, the bed would be a little bit droopier and in the middle, it stuck up a bit further than the outsides. But with a P1P, it does automatic bed leveling, like actual automatic bed leveling. There's no shims, there's no buttons. It just does it by itself before every single print. It uses some sort of strain gauge or piezo sensor under the bed to sense when the nozzle has touched it and I'll touch each point about five times or so, and checks the positioning of the bed at around, I think, 20 points in the bed or so. There's also some other calibration going on before the print starts, and I think that's where vibration. So your printer will perform differently depending on what surface it's placed on, because when this print head is flying around, it does cause a lot of movement, even though it's set on something flat. So far, the bed leveling has pretty much worked flawless for me. I always have perfect first layers. There's only one print that's failed so far, and that's because I didn't use a brim. There was a single strip of filament as a first layer, and it continued to build up from there. So as the nozzle was moving across the part, printing on a new layer, eventually it ripped the part off of the bed. But I added a small brim to it, and that fixed the entire problem. So although bed leveling is amazing, one thing that's really annoying about bed leveling is that it has to perform it every single time. So every single time you send a print, whether it's a five minute print or a five hour print, you're gonna waste five to 10 minutes at the beginning, preheating as well as doing some calibration. So this is bed leveling as well as I believe vibration compensation or some sort of input shaping. There doesn't really seem to be a way to get around this. I did try unchecking the bed leveling and it still took around four to five minutes. So it didn't save me that much time. But perhaps I'll play around with this a little bit more and actually do some time studies to see what the real results are. One other major con about this printer is the interface. 
If you're paying $700 for a printer, USD, or I think this is like $859 Canadian, you expect to have some sort of LCD screen. But the interface for the Bamboo Labs P1P looks like something out of the books of a 2010 printer. It's basically got this pixelated LCD screen that's maybe like 32 pixels by 256. I'm not sure the exact numbers, but it's not a great screen. If you upgrade to the X1 Carbon though, you get a full LCD screen. I do have an X1 Carbon at work, so I've played around with that a little bit, and the screen does seem a little bit laggy here and there, but nonetheless, it's a nicer interface. So if you don't really care about the screen on your 3D printer, like I don't really care, then go with the Bamboo Labs P1P because you're gonna be saving yourself about 400 bucks. And all the controls that you see on the screen, you can actually do from the Bamboo Labs application on your PC, and you can do some other minor adjustments on the Bamboo Handy app. To end off the video, there's a few other small nitpicky things that you should be aware of before buying the Bamboo Labs P1P. If you wanna print with ABS, you're gonna to need to build your own enclosure, so that's gonna be an added cost. You're probably looking at $100 to $150 if you're gonna buy something off the shelf and print some hinges. And if you're gonna do it yourself and design it yourself, and you have your own laser cutter, then you could probably do it for about $30 to $40. I printed TPU on the Bamboo Labs P1P, and it's not that much faster than the Adventure 4. So if you're predominantly printing TPU, don't expect a huge speed bump with the Bamboo Labs P1P. It still has trouble pushing TPU through the nozzle because it's a very flexible material, so you can't do it at high rates. I'd recommend sticking somewhere between 30 millimeters per second to 60 millimeters per second, depending on the durometer of your filament. For a 95A, you can probably bump it up to 60 millimeters per second, which is still about three times faster than what I printed TPU on my Adventure 4. But if the hardness of your TPU is like Ninja Flex around 85A, then probably start with 30 millimeters per second and go up from there. You can also set a max volumetric flow rate, and typically for the 95A, I would recommend between five to six millimeter cube per second. And for TPU below the hardness of 90A, probably bump it down to three to four millimeters cubed per second. The advertised speeds of the Bamboo Labs P1P is not completely true for all filaments. Like I mentioned earlier, TPU is significantly slower versus PLA. And same thing with PETG. You're not gonna be able to print PETG at 400 millimeters per second like you can do with PLA, but it is a lot faster than the Avenger 4. So just take the speeds with a grain of salt. You're gonna to have to adjust based on the filament. And a lot of this is actually limited by the volumetric flow rate, which I mentioned earlier with TPU. Bamboo Labs already has standard profiles for generic PLA, generic ABS, generic ASA, or PETG. I would generally start off with these and start tuning from there. You can bump it up by maybe one or two millimeters cubed per second from one trial to another and see where your printer fails at. There's some other calibration prints that you can do, which I may cover in a future video. And if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments down below. Another issue I've encountered ever since having this P1P for about a week and a half is that I've had a clogged nozzle. So this is when I was printing PETG and I was trying to switch from PETG over to TPU. My TPU hardness was 90A. This is the Polymaker TPU. And when I tried to change the filament and load the TPU after printing PETG, I had an issue where the TPU wasn't able to push out the PETG filament. So I tried a few things like trying to put back PETG, which didn't really work. I tried the cleaning filament, which also didn't work. And the last thing that I tried was removing the tubing from the extruder and then using the unclogging tool thingy and pushing it down and breaking through any sort of, I think, burnt filament. So likely the filament got burnt and got stuck there. So the unclogging tool helped break through that. And then after that, I used my extruder cleaning filament to help clear out the nozzle. And ever since then, TPU printed fairly well. But just note, if you're switching from PETG over to TPU, you might run into this incident. So this kind of sums up my experience with the Bamboo Labs P1P for the first week and a half. And I would highly recommend if you're looking for a fast 3D printer that's reliable, that you get yourself one of these Bamboo Labs printers. I'm not affiliated with them, but I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to check out where I got mine. Last time I checked, they're offering a free LED bar as well as a free camera when you're purchasing your printer. The early bird special, which was like earlier in February, they were also offering the auxiliary fan, which I did not get. 
Eventually, I might invest in the auxiliary fan because it's only another $30, as well as the hardened steel nozzle, which may allow me to print carbon fiber. If you guys have any questions or experiments that you want me to try on the Bamboo Labs POMP, let me know down in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next one.